Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. We apologize for the gaps in videos. Some of it's Marlon's fault who actually puts these videos out. Some of it's my fault because we've been in the middle of moving. Brooke and I got a new house and a new town and it has been taking up a lot of time. So that's kind of how this video starts. So in today's episode we are off on a new adventure to a place we have never been before in a land far far away. But we're doing a little grocery shop along the way. And years ago, some friend of mine gave me a little bit of this meat from this place that we're traveling through right now. It's called Bear Ridge Custom Meats. Let's walk in there and see what they got. Oh God. There they are. This is what we came for. Ooh, what are those? Those Land Jaeger too? Okay, we'll take a spicy. Yeah, might as well, you know, why not? So I gotta tell you a story. My buddy gets this meat done here and I've never had it before and he forgot it in my cooler, and I was so excited I bit a hole through my tongue. Well, <laughs> so, needless to say, I'm passing through and had to stop. Oh God, this looks so good. Garlic, what was it, garlic cheddar? I don't even know, but it looked good. We got Land Jaeger, which if you guys have never had these, we'll bust these out later on in the episode. These are absolutely insane. Kind of like a pepperoni style, very German recipe. Okay, we gotta try the pepper jack real quick. Mm. For those of you that don't know, I'm a pepperoni connoisseur. And that's why I bit a hole in my tongue when I had these the first time, because they were that good. Pepper Jack's unreal. That looks like cheddar jalapeno. Mm. Like that one. Nice and dry. Not too greasy. Tons of flavor. Nice little hints of cheese. Mm. Yeah. Howdy, kids. Tiny down the floor. Hey, guy. What is up top? Let's hit the road. Thanks, Bear Ridge Meats. You the bomb! Well, who'd have guessed? Road construction. One of the worst parts of traveling in the summertime. Comment below if you can agree. That's where we're going is six and a half hours from where I live. And I live just north of the Oregon border in Washington at this point in my life. But it's six and a half hours from the new house to where we're going. So what I got, obviously, sugar-free Red Bull, because we're watching our figure. A little bit of the uh, Czech mix. Bold, garlic flavor. Best flavor, if you're asking me. And uh, of course, the squigglies. Trying to take it easy on the meat snack, because it'll have to last a couple of days. But I'm really excited to go where we're going today. We're meeting up with a friend of mine to start this video, and we're doing some fishing that I've never done before. I've fished for these kind of fish before, but never in this location and in this area. It's a very, very special kind of destination spot for the fish. They travel a long ways get, to get to this area, and it makes for some incredible fishing. So that'll be in the morning, but we have to get through this tonight. We have to go a long ways, another probably four and a half hours still. We're gonna make shift to camp tonight. We're gonna get on the boat in the morning. We're gonna have some incredible fishing. So then after after tomorrow, we got a whole nother bag of tricks in store for you. So I'm gonna sit here and enjoy my snacks, eat a couple squigglies, wait for this to, oh, the cop. Hello, officer. At least not illegal to film and drive. <sighs> All right, party break time. Come on, kids. Let's go check out the creek. Since we're stopping, we better make a cast. A little touching jig. Let's go check it out. Ooh, fishy. Very, very fishy. Yikes. Okay, let's set up here. Make a couple quick casts. See if there's a fish in there. Oh, first cast hit. First cast hit. What was that? Oh my god. Second cast hit. Well, it was worth the stop. Obviously, we had to make a cast. I don't think it was very big would ever hit because they got hit a couple times and didn't stick. That's all right. What a beautiful little river. This is kind of a prelim of what's to come, what we're going to see here on this trip. Tomorrow, the river we're fishing is giant, so it's not even not even comparable to this. But the next day, we've got some other cool stuff in store in places. A lot like what you see here. 
Get some good water, kids. Huh, kids? Y'all hydrated? Nice little pit stop with a little bit of fishing in between. That's my kind of road trip. What is this? What is this? Giant sign said fruit and antiques. And I'm in fruit and antique country. Let's go see what they got. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is what we have here. Jalapeno quail eggs. Yes, I think so. Or should we just go pickle real eggs? That might be more of a bang for the buck. Yeah. Okay. Item number one. So what I really stopped here for is a, a local favorite, and that is Walla Walla onions. So that's what we're gonna be cooking for to dinner tonight. And these things are world famous. Come from Walla Walla, obviously Walla Walla, Washington. And uh, they are some of the most sought after and flavorful onions in the world. So let's grab us a couple. We still have a few more ingredients for dinner tonight. Because uh, tonight's road trip is just ending at camp. And then we're going to do a little catch and cook. And the catching is happening right now. Obviously we need to get some cherries. Those look amazing. Better try one first. Yep. Yep. Pickled Brussels sprouts. Yep. All right, everybody, we have officially made it. And I must say, in good form, this has to be one of the most poachy camping spots we've ever done here at Stay Fishy. Kind of just in a city park on the side of the road, but that's where we're launching in the morning. So we've made it. What a drive, what a kind of a boring day. But we, it was very eventful in ways. Scored a lot of good eats. Now it's time to eat some. Let's get camp set up, get some food going, get some good rest, because we have an early morning. I'm starving, let's do it. We're camping. On the menu tonight, you knew it. You guys saw it first. You saw it here first. Actually, I saw it at Burgerville first, but we're doing Walla Walla sweet onion rings, everybody. We're gonna do a panko, nice little tempura breading. I'm using the tempura instead of like a beer batter or something because I want that like sweeter flavor that you get from that tempura batter. So let's get to chopping, get to cooking. I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna go fairly thick on these. Cause I like me a thick onion ring, plus it makes them a lot easier to bread. So I'm really gonna go two cuts on each onion. Peel those bad boys apart. That are nice, thick pieces. On my mouth, I literally can't even talk right now. My mouth's watering so much. I'm very excited for this. I'm gonna do kind of like I normally do with my fish. I'm gonna season up my uh, onion rings first before I actually add them into the, the tempura batter. So I'm gonna get these things kind of spread out. I'm gonna do a little bit of a saisoning. This is gonna really make them good. A lot of people don't season their onion rings. I, for one, do. Okay. A little bit of water. Yeah, no, this doesn't work. Okay, gonna get our oil going. Had to make a little quick store run because Jordan's a dummy and he bought tempura breadcrumbs, not tempura batter. Uh, so now we have both. We have breadcrumbs and batter. So we're getting extra crispy. Extra, extra crispy. I'm not gonna go too much oil because I don't want to waste it. I'm gonna let that heat up. We're gonna get our first ring going. Get a little dip, because when we dip, we dip. And then we dip. Ooh, that's looking real good. On to dip number two. Should probably double dip here if I'm if I'm doing it restaurant style. Because here at Safe Fishy Adventures, we always double dip our rings. Okay, I'm not gonna go too crazy. We got two of them going. So we want to be doing the dip, dip, dip into the hot stuff right away. So let's let our oil get nice and hot. It's time to cook. Okay, first one's going in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. In we go. Yeah, probably only three at a time in the, the size of reservoir that we have. Okay, here it is, golden brown. Our first stay fishy. Walla Walla Sweet onion ring. Looks amazing. Okay, I'm sorry, but I can't wait. I gotta try it. But I've been staring at these damn onions all day. There we go. Oh yeah, 
burger wheel ain't got nothing on me. One by one, out the fryer they come. Well, I gotta say, it's not the most difficult thing to make in the world, but I'm proud of myself. It turned out amazing. Nothing like those Walla Walla sweets. You can pretty much buy these things anywhere in the country, but especially if you live in the Pacific Northwest, do yourself a favor. Get some of them Walla Walla sweets. Make some money rings at home. It's delicious. Mmm. so early for time for a cup of joe mm, good cup of joe oh yeah that's how real men start their day oh pop of freshness a little scoop of the juice Team. A little jalapeno in here. Mmm. Mmm. Very well balanced breakfast. Well, we'll do it. All right, we have made it. We met up with my buddy Ryan this morning. Got beachfront service. Come on. And that's who we're fishing with, everybody. Come on. Let's go do it. Come on. Pretty cool little deal here. I didn't want to. I didn't want to ruin the surprise for you guys, but fishing for sockeye. We drove a long ways and so did these fish. How far away from the ocean are we? 450 miles. 450 miles these things traveled. And what's happening here is they made it all the way to basically their destination. The sockeye are lake spawners so they travel all the way up to these rivers that go into lakes in eastern Washington where we're at here. They all pool up, they like this cold water. It's time to get us a couple of tasty fish. 23, there's 24. And the rod holder we go. There's one underneath the gear right now. Might be going too fast. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Most people, most people, they go too fast for these things. So what makes them want that slow presentation? Just when you're fishing a dodger, you just want that dodger just barely going just side to side. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. It's almost like a kokanee presentation. A little exactly. bit. Is a little bit bigger of a dodger than you'd use, or is it the yeah. same size? If I was kokanee fishing, I'd go one size down. Gotcha. Pretty neat. This is my first time ever fishing for these fish like this. A lot of times we'll fish down in the lower Columbia and we just we take our lines out with a boat, we drop them down with just a little what we call a spinglow and a coon trim. But this is the first time I've ever actually trolled for them, so this is pretty freaking cool. You on there? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, there? Yeah, it came off on the handoff. Darn it. Got him? Something weird though, it's heavy. Tangle? Make sure that count reel all the way to the tip next to Back run, back run! It's there, it's there, it's still going, still going. Coming through, coming through the river. First fish of the morning. <laughs> that's a dink, we'll take. That's not, that's not dink, dink. We... <laughs> there it is. Our first sockeye. Go grab her. Oh, that's a little better one. Oh, it's a little bit bigger. Oh, a real nice one. Oh, that's Heck a yeah. big sockeye. Heck Holy yeah. cow. For up here, that's as big as they get. Heck yeah. Hey, power on, power on, power on, power on. Come on, come on. Flip. Boat flipping. This is what we do. <laughs> light. Wow. There it is, everybody. Sockeye salmon, one of the tastiest in the world. This one's actually starting to look quite a bit like a sockeye. It's got that big golden eye, it's starting to get that little bit of a red color. But wait until you see this meat, you guys. This is going to be one of the best catching cooks yet here on Stay Fishy. Let's get him bled, get him in the box. What a beauty! We got two fish in the boat. We got our food for our catch and cook. It's gonna be a long day still. We got a long road trip still ahead of us this afternoon. We've got our fish for this morning. If you guys wanna see the rest of today's video, you're gonna to have to go over to the Addicted Fishing Channel, which is our other channel, and watch this. Cause we are gonna be absolutely smashing fish the rest of the day here with Ryan. We'll see you over there on the other channel, or we'll see you back at the dock. Let's do it. Well, my fishy friends, this is how it ended up. You saw the first two 
But again, if you guys want to see the rest of the carnage from today, you're gonna to have to go over to Addicted Fishing and watch this video. And this, this is what we came for. Look at that. That is some pretty fish. And the beautiful part of it is, is it's 7.30 in the morning. We have the entire day ahead of us still. We're gonna get these fish cleaned up, We're gonna hit the road, We're gonna do a little cook for the Addicted video, but then it's back on the road and to our new spot. I think we're gonna do some more fishing today. I don't know. I don't know where this trip is gonna end up or where we're even going. It's kind of the fun part about a road trip like this one with no destination in mind. So we're just on an adventure. Let's get this going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to the turnoff. We're getting back into my kind of country here and that's dirt road country. So we got quite a few miles, probably two or three miles up this gnarly little skate Go all the way up and to the spot. We got a little tip from a little birdie uh, that this was a place we can find some rocks and some geodes, some cool stuff in these hills. So let's get to four bind, let's get up the hill, let's go find us some gems. around the corner and I see my first sign of digging. Good idea, especially in a spot like this um, where it's a pretty public area. A lot of the places you guys have seen me dig or you see they're on private property or way, way deep in areas where people don't really even know uh, that there is any sort of, <sighs> gotta put the Chacos in four wheel drive, where people don't even know that there's any sort of geode or, or cool rock available. What the hell is this? Outside of the road. Nothing, that's nothing. Um, but a good way to tell and a good way to find out is seeing stuff like this. See all this sediment. So first things first, we're looking for this color. You see how these rocks, we're seeing some rocks here that have some pretty good color. Obviously some layers and some different sort of sediment um, pressed into the rocks in between it. Uh, and this is a good, good starting point. I'm not sure what we're gonna find here, but I see holes up here from where people have dug before. Let's go check it out. Like people have actually been here pretty recently. Don't really see much. Some of the good stuff might be covered up here. Don't really see too much pay dirt. I mean, there's definitely some stuff dug, some old stuff pulled away here, but what they're finding, I do not know. Let's go check these other two spots. I didn't bring too much lapidary equipment. But uh, nonetheless, I got an ax in the truck. First sign of mining is a strikeout. Let's keep going down the road. On the GPS, on the satellite, I could see some other areas that looked like they had a little more potential than this. So let's hop back in the truck and get moving. Okay, another spot. Not seeing a whole lot. Kind of feeling like I got led on a wild goose chase here. The thing is, I'm seeing a lot of evidence of digging. I just can't tell for what. I don't see really anything worth much value. It almost looks like some jasper in a way or kind of some rainbow rock material, but definitely not what I was looking for. Definitely not what I was looking for. So far today has been some killer fishing. Not so killer. Oh, there's a bug. Little's getting bugged. He's back to the truck. See you later. And just a friendly reminder of, as it's summertime again, that uh, Little's arch nemesis is Bugs. He will no longer be joining us on this rock hunting adventure. I think, I do think, just for the sake of time, because I have to go meet my friend. And we're still doing some fishing today. And hopefully it will be some killer fishing. But for the sake of time, we might throw in the towel on this rock hunting adventure. Oh, fire ants. Ooh, yeah, don't want to pick that rock up again. But for the sake of time, anyways, like I was saying, what's this? Interesting. I don't know. Looks like it came from right here. But anyways, like I was saying, I think maybe for the sake of time and in the spirit of catching more fish today, since we definitely didn't get our fill of that, we might call it quits on the rock hunting adventure. I would like to stay and do this a little longer, but I don't have any, I don't have a shovel somehow. Shovel got left at home with the new move, like I talked about in the beginning of the episode. And uh, I don't like being unprepared for a mission like this. 
Um, I know you guys love the fishing, I know you love the camping and the cooking, but the rock hunting is one of my very favorite things. So I've done a couple of rock hunting episodes over the years and uh, they've done really bad. <laughs> you guys didn't respond well and the videos did not get very many views. So we haven't done too many since, but if you guys are missing them, if you actually like those rock hunting adventures, be sure to comment below and let me know that you like them. And we'll keep mixing rock hunting in and maybe even do some more destination style of stuff with the rock hunting uh, here in some future episodes. So maybe we'll see a spot on the way out. But we've burned enough fuel, we've burned enough time. Let's hit the road. Okay, this is cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on top of the world. Wow, look at this view. Wow, it's a fire lookout is what it looks like. That's the beautiful thing about rock hunting or any kind of adventuring like this, any kind of destination sort of thing where you don't know where you're going or what you're looking for. Um, to be able to just find stuff like this. You know, I just picked this area I found on Google, told me that there was some rock hunting sort of stuff up here. There's some geodes and stuff to find, but normally it's not the treasure you're going after that really ends up being the treasure. It's spots like this, experiences like this. It's so freaking cool. All right, as expected, total squirrel moment. The adventure is continuing. We got a sign from the rock gods that we are in the right place. The real reason that we are now embarking on this journey is what we saw right here. And I think this is the sign. Agate beds. One mile. <laughs> okay. Miles not very far. We can probably hike that in about 15, 20 minutes. So let's put on some miles or a mile. Let's see if we can find ourselves some rocks. All right. Now I'm pretty certain we are in the agate beds, but I'm telling you, you can tell just by all this disturbance, everything's been dug out, everything's been moved around, but you know, from my experience, which it's quite a bit of experience, this just doesn't seem very agate-y. There might be some geode style rocks in here. Like this one here seems a little bit hollow, but I'm not seeing what I was hoping to see in this spot. One thing I will say is this view that doesn't suck. Got the fire lookout over there. You can see a damn near country mile. But we gave it a pretty good shot. I'm gonna walk around for a few more minutes here, see if we can stumble upon something good, but I'm not liking what I see. There was one more stop I wanna make on the way to our next destination of where we're gonna be fishing again, so. It was worth the effort, but I don't know if this is gonna be our rock spot. Keep our fingers crossed on the way out. Maybe we'll stumble upon something good. Cool hike though, that's for sure. Yep, since we couldn't get it done ourselves, we didn't come prepared. We're still gonna show you anyways what we came looking for. So let's get parked, let's hop out of the truck, let's see what this place has. Yeah, we definitely didn't find anything like that. This is beautiful, really neat. Let's keep looking. Everybody meet Frank. Holy shnikes. What a specimen this thing is. Highly, highly doubt this thing came from here. If it did, we need to look a little harder because I need drink in my life. Unreal. Yeah, this looks a little bit more like what we were looking for. Some true agate. But this is really what we are looking for, these quartz nodules. Whew. But at least we saw what we didn't get. Got a little taste this too this is exactly what we were looking for beautiful red neat colors well better luck next time it was a good hike now on to fishing okay we have made it a long long ways to a very beautiful river and look what we have here a little bit of paradise got my brother AJ here we got a beautiful river big truck and lots of trout waiting to get caught let's go have some fun well who do we have here oh what's going My on friend. everybody <laughs> yeah it's little looking fishy little night bite action you know the cool thing is this is our first time fishing together me and my friend here and it kind of goes to show the beauty of the YouTube channel. Um, we met through Addicted Fishing. Uh, him and his family have been huge supporters of our channel for a long time. And he told me, next time you're in my neck of the woods, hit me up, 
come to my house and I'll show you my home river and a little bit what I'm all about and that's exactly what we're doing here today so just kind of the beauty of the whole community that all this fishing and all this fun and all this family creates now it's time to go catch some fish Oh, now we're going, we're good. We're on. We're fishing, everyone. Here we go. That looks jiggy to me. We better get jiggy with it. Was that a fish? Oh, no. Oh, she's on the anchor. <laughs> or on the bottom. She's behind us. <laughs> so have you guys been getting them on the jigs at all? I haven't hit one yet. Okay. I've had some hits, but nothing stuck. And I think maybe it's because I ran it into a fish, to be honest with you. get it? Okay, it might be a worm show. Might be a worm show. Cycling through them. If you catch a fish, make sure to thank your sponsor. <laughs> okay. uh, I'd like to thank Tim Hortons. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Oh, that's a good one, too. That's a good one. That's a heavy fish. Oh, she's all bent up. She's all bent up. Oh, yep. There we go. <laughs> First one of the afternoon. First one of the afternoon. Her dreams came true. Dreams, dreams do come true. Little barking at her own fish. The lady got one with the lid dog. Canada's on the board. <laughs> Canada one. US zero. The International Fishing Cup, ladies and gentlemen. USA minus one. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even recording. <laughs> Never even happened. Oh, there he is. Nailed him. Oh, that was a good one too. Another good red side. Son of a gun. It's all right. Got that one though. Oh, got him. Oh, ham sandwich. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. In the net. USA on the board. <laughs> there he is. Beautiful little rainbow. That's enough. That's enough little. Not enough to get a bark out of time guy. But it's okay. Beauty little rainbow. Back to nature he goes. Thank you, little buddy. See you later. Woo! If you guys are wondering this competition, she's from Canada. We're from the US. <laughs> Canada versus US. Tied up. Tied up. But we're not very competitive, we don't care about that kind of thing. No, not at all. <laughs> Even with the natural, oh, got it! Frickin' A. Okay, we got him. Little, that's enough. He's gonna fall off the boat. Cut number two. Another little cutie. USA's up. Little cutie rainbow. USA. Two. Good one. USA, USA. Oh, God, Ollie. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, we the leadered it. Yeah, we leadered it. <laughs> we whacked him off. Oh, my God. We're a bunch of whack offs. I'm taking full credit for that. That was my fault. It was Ooh. in the net. That's three. <laughs> that was funny. That was, three. that was a good one. <laughs> Live action. USA, USA. But it's all right. We're very comforting and inviting here in USA. I'm gonna make you guys dinner. Mm -mm -mm. Nothing like a little country sashimi. That's exactly what this recipe is going to be. Got some beautiful fresh caught sockeye salmon. Just pulled out of the river. Heck, not even eight hours ago. What a killer morning of fishing and the perfect fish to share with some good friends. What we're doing tonight is something that I've actually never made. It's going to be like the simplest sushi I've ever made. More of a sashimi style. Um, and you're going to see how that goes here in just a second. But we've got to get our fish cut up. We've got to get it blanching. Um, we're going to get it curing basically because especially because these fish traveled so far from the ocean we want to get them in something that's going to start to cure kill any parasites we're not going to be cooking this but what we're going to be putting on it is essentially going to be cooking it so let's get our pieces ready let's get it all blanched get it nice and prepared and we're going to get the rest of our ingredients ready 
nice thin slices not necessarily paper thin but enough to see some light through look at the color of that it's beautiful now taku don't be judging me i wish you were here to help me with this recipe but it's taco inspired i know if we caught these fish with that guy this is exactly how he'd be eating them sea salt okay this one might freak you out a little bit this is a little everything but the bagel seasoning go, just a little bit on there not much just enough to get a little bit of sesame a little bit of poppy seed on each one some seasoned mild white wine vinegar finished off blanching it with a little bit of soy sauce Make sure everything gets a nice coating here. Kind of get all that seasoning washed around. And we're gonna set this in the fridge. Let it do its magic for about 45 minutes to an hour. And get the rest of our ingredients ready. So what I'm gonna do here is really gonna freak you guys out. I'm looking for the perfect shaped onion. And I think we have it. I'm gonna cut right through there. And then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna to try to cut individual little strips here. I'm gonna take a knife and press them flat. Okay, time for sticky rice. The, the sugar is kind of the secret ingredient here. I'm gonna go one tablespoon. Yeah, let's go about a tablespoon and a half, never hurt. And the rice wine vinegar, probably about a third of a cup. And do you can't take it out. Like I always say, you can't take it out, you can always put more in. Gotta do the taste test. It's the most important part of this. You don't want to be winging it. Yeah, a little more both. That should do it. Let that cool down. We're ready to assemble. Okay, we are so ready, everyone. We're gonna get a piece of fish. You can see how that's it's damn near cooked. Definitely changed colors, definitely changed consistency and texture. It's kind of firm now. Feels like a, a cured meat. We're gonna cut ourselves a couple little strips. Now I'm gonna wet my hand. That's really the secret to this. Grab a little chunk of rice. I'm gonna try to get this nice little, nice little owl pellet shape, really. <laughs> or cat turd, whatever you want. Cat turd shape, owl pellet, whatever tickles your fancy. I'm gonna go a nice piece of walla walla onion for the crisp. Lay my piece of sock right on top. Beautiful. All right, it is served. The work's done presentation is on point. I'm proud of myself. I don't know what you call this roll, but we're gonna call it country sushi. Let's eat. All right. What do you guys think? Does that look pretty good? Oh, it's dead sexy. I'm telling you. It's dead sexy. They're going to be over there on that edge. Oh, they're going to be boy. up top in that fast stuff. You're not, and they're going to be, guess what? Sprawled here. out. Yeah. They're going to be there. Here. Yes. Oh, this is beautiful. Just kind of pick your spot, man. So, Bill Herzog, my friend behind me, guys, is one of the most iconic and well-rounded fisherman in, in the Northwest, honestly. He's written tons of books. He's given lots of knowledge to the fishing community, and I'm lucky enough to call him a friend, so he's taking me out on his home river today. And we're in search of a very, very beautiful fish, so without further ado, let's find him. Oh, they're 
you're hungry. They told me. Oh, he's on! Oh, first down. Whoa. Thing, little. Cut throat. Oh, God, that's a nice one. Yeah, Woohoo! Come here, boy. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, Little they're now. Go to get out of the water. Look no. how fat and pretty those are. Wow. Are. I think we're that thing is not hungry. No, but he, uh, he is hungry. Woohoo! First one of the morning. Yeah, what a hog, too. That's the small end of the ones you catch without jigs in here. Because they're fish eaters. And he was right in tight. He was really close to me. Oh, God. Broke you on the freaking dike? Power play, power play, power play, I that promise. Fish. Yeah, I don't think that was a problem. <laughs> the worst players in here, they do bite the jig. That was a big fish. <laughs> not much gone. The bluey, dude. Oh, dude, that's... Holy listen, shit. I got my drag fairly not that tight. <laughs> oh, God, no! Got him! Oh, God, he ripped it! Oh, he ripped it hard! Right out of my hand! <laughs> Oh, that's a nice one. Wow, oh god, he's chunk a monka. Chunk a monka ding dong. Oh, that is so awesome, everybody. My favorite way to catch trout on twitching jigs. And this man right here, I'm not gonna say he invented it, but he was there. That's for darn sure. It's important to handle these trout with care, especially if you're anywhere in the Northwest or hell, anywhere in the world you're catching these wild, wild trout in general are always worth taking the utmost amount of care with, making sure they stay in the water. Oh my God, it's a football. Look at this specimen. Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you, brother. And thank you, fish. Mwah. See you later. Woohoo! Well, that's better than coffee right there. So the kind of fishing that we're doing here today, guys, is with these sculpin jigs. This is the method that Bill taught me a few years ago, and uh, I was really, really excited to come and fish with them again, but what these things are is they're basically emulating a sculpin, which is a type of fish that you find in any sort of body of water, uh, whether it be a lake or river, basically anywhere in the world. And they're a little, we'll put a little picture of it in the, in the corner here. They're like a little, little bottom dweller, basically. And trout, like these big trout that we're catching now, these big cutthroat, survive and get this big off of eating other fish. They're not only bug eaters, especially this time of year, They'll be feeding on other fish like these sculpin, so that's why it works so good, and that's why we're catching these big ones. So let's find another one. You gotta turn your steelhead brain off in here. Yep. They lay all the way down to the to the, to the break. Gotcha. You just have to throw it down a little more and just just to swing it around. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen. Don't worry, it's gonna happen. Here. Got him. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Thing literally hit the water, started to swing, and so bland. Oh god, that's a big one. That's even bigger than the last one. Keep the work in me. Little's excited. Oh god, that's a big one. Oh, big old buck. Oh, what dude. a pretty fish. Dude. Look at that. That's a huge kick. <laughs> oh, there's your Look at trout. that fish. There's your jig trout. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's old stomach. Yeah, it's all no head. Wow, I'm gonna keep George, it in the water. Congratulations. Brother, thank you. Oh, what a gorgeous trout, man. I love his mouth. Oh. Just a good looking, healthy, healthy gorgeous, fish. Gorgeous fish. Look at that. Later, buddy. Brother. Woo! Wow, what a fish. Whew. <laughs> Gotta let the nerves wear off of that one. I got goosebumps. That was one of the prettiest trout I've ever caught in my life. What a place to do it, too. This is what good friends are all about. So, you guys, I'm gonna do it to you again. What I try to do here on Stay Fish, you guys, is I try to make these videos, and I want to see your opinion on them. See some comments below after I say what I say here. But I try to make these videos more about the travel, the behind the scenes, the fun, the friends, and the camaraderie, and the adventure that we share when we go on these trips like this. I try not to make these videos too much about fishing, as you've been able to tell. I've only put a couple of fish in every episode, even when we do have good days. So 
I'm gonna do it to you again. If you guys wanna see the rest of today's video, you're gonna have to go over to Addicted Fishing Channel some point in time and check out this video that we're gonna continue making with Bill. We're gonna switch over, start making that. This is awesome. See you in a minute. What a killer morning of fishing it's been. The sun's out, guns are out. Now it's time for some tacos. Got some carne asada here we picked up. Brian told me I had to go and get this stuff from this little mini market. And boy, it doesn't look good. Oh yeah. You can almost eat that like sushi. I know, it really, I'll seriously <laughs> sprinkle, or just squirt some lime juice on it. I'm gonna chop it up into my little bite-sized pieces. And this is the Stay Fishy Munch of the Week. And the Stay Fishy Jordan Forgotten Item of the Week this week was a pan, so we're cooking the carne asada in a pot. I'm sure it's been done before. Easy. You know what I can have for 24 hours? Liquid. I can have Gatorade, water. You can't eat broth. this? No, I can just smell it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Poor guy. You have no idea. Oh, getting old sucks, man. Yeah. He's on the liquid diet. Yeah. He's got a blood test tomorrow, and I didn't know that before we started yeah. cooking this delicious lunch, but hell, it's done. Might as well eat it. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to I'm just going to I'm an <laughs> Enjoy from afar. Oh boy. <laughs> Look at that. Mm. Mm. Big trout and tacos. Story of my life. Alright kids, let's go. Let's go. The adventure's over. <sighs> Whew, that's a hot car. Well everybody, I want to thank you again. For joining us here on another incredible stay fishy adventure what a fun road trip this has been so many fish caught so many good times with good people and good friends and a lot of memories made i love traveling like this truck camping is one of my favorite pastimes in the world thank you all so much for being here along for this adventure this week it's time to make the long five hour journey home dogs are tired i want to sleep in bed and all in all what a perfect trip. Thank you all so much for joining us on today's adventure, everybody. We're actually headed next. I'm gonna go home for a day and we're gonna head right back out to go film a video you guys have been asking for. A video that did really well, my biggest video ever, and that was the Tiny Island Challenge. There's a little thing of the thumbnail right there. Go back and check that out if you haven't seen it, but we're going to do one with absolutely nothing. We're going bare bones, we're gonna pretend the boat sank. I'm only gonna have a couple surprise items that I'm left with, and we're gonna survive on a tiny island as long as we can. So with all that being said, everybody, until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy, we'll see you out there.